Okay, so we had these two words coming up over and over, correlation, causation. Let me just wrap up the week talking a little bit more about each one. So correlation, um, we're looking at trends between two variables. Uh, later it can be more variables on the, the x-axis, but basically what we're interested in is a relationship between two variables, height and weight. As your height goes up, does your weight go up? Uh, GPA and college success. As your high school GPA is higher, is your college success higher? Or are the two not really related? Um, it's very powerful in a couple ways. One, predicting, uh, and another, hopefully showing causation. Although, remember, we have to be careful about that. So correlation uh, gives us this R value, and we can square it for a... Um, an effect size. So R is kind of a measure of, of the practical significance and effect size. Uh, whether or not a correlation is statistically significant is a different issue. So just like we had before with, uh, with t-tests and things, there's the statistical significance, uh, but then there's also the practical significance, the effect size, the R. Um, and when we do get a significant correlation, though, what does that mean? Well, it means that these two variables really do seem to be related somehow. We don't necessarily know that one is causing the other, although, although a good strong correlation between two variables is certainly good evidence. Um, you really want to have that there if you're going to try to show that uh, eating red meat increases cancer risk. Well, then you better start by having a relationship between the two. Uh, and then if, if you do show that there's a relationship between the two, then you can look at more sophisticated techniques to try to see if it just happens to be a correlation. Maybe the, the people who tend to eat red meat uh, also are the same people who have more heart disease, um, not because of the red meat, but they just happen to be more likely there's something else behind the scenes causing causing that relationship. So the correlation is important for showing causation, but we certainly can't decide on causation just because we have correlation. Correlation is fairly easy to show. Causation is very difficult to show. Um, so then a little bit more about causation. Oh, and, and correlation, by the way, one of the cool things is you can compare it anything as long as you have data points on with more than one uh, variable so if we know in our statistics class we know everyone's um, preference for ice cream and uh, actually you know what that's not a good because categoricals shouldn't really be used with correlation unless there's only two categories, right? Two categories we can do it, but ice cream preference is hard. So let's choose something. Um, number of countries that you visited in your life, and uh, let's get something totally different. Number of times that you've brushed your teeth in your life. Um, completely different variables, and probably not a big correlation. Uh, although I did brush my teeth less when I traveled because there was the clean water issue and I always had to have bottled water uh, in certain countries. Uh, but probably not a big relationship. However, because we can pair that data, so we can take my data for number of times brushed and countries visited, we can take each one of your data for uh, number of times you've brushed your teeth and number of countries you've visited. Uh, because we can take all of that paired data for each of us, we could certainly calculate a correlation even if it's not strong. And let's go back to that issue of causation. What does that mean? So let's say we go through all the sophisticated techniques and we do find that something is causing something else. Um, what's an example? Lack of brushing teeth causing heart disease. That's one of the things that's being, or sorry, lack of uh, flossing. Lack of flossing and heart disease is, is one thing that's been uh, in the medical news, uh, in a little section of the medical news over the last several years. Um, 
So let's assume that there is a cause. Let's assume that uh, not flossing your teeth does lead to increased heart disease risk. If that's true, what would happen? Would it mean that if any given person never flosses their teeth, then absolutely they'll get heart disease? No, not necessarily. What we're looking at is an average. If we took a large group of people um, and then randomly divided them into two groups, this group was never allowed to brush their teeth, uh, floss their teeth, and this group had to floss their teeth regularly, we would expect to see uh, a higher rate of heart disease in those who didn't floss their teeth, assuming there was a random assignment there. Now, what if there wasn't a random assignment? Does it mean that so we're still assuming that not flossing your teeth uh, leads to increased risk of heart disease, if that's true. If that's true, um, would we expect to find people who don't floss their teeth? Would we expect to see them having more heart disease than people who do floss their teeth? No. And that's tricky. That's really tricky thing about uh, causation. This is this selection bias again. Why can't we say that? It's the same reason we can't just get a correlation and then assume it's a causation. Um, it's, it's because the people who do floss their teeth might be different than the people who don't floss their teeth. So because those groups are so different, it may not be the actual flossing, uh, even if flossing is causing, um, is a, a good cause of reducing heart disease. Um, the two existing groups, those who floss their teeth and those who don't, may be completely different. Maybe one is uh, lots of males. Let's say it just happens to be that males are... Um, are very diligent and floss their teeth all the time, and females don't. I think the opposite is probably true, but I'm trying to uh, fit the example I've already created. So it, in that case, even though flossing leads to decreased heart disease, uh, the men who are flossing constantly, um, men do have more heart disease than women, um, even though they're in the group that flosses more. So the Flossing is helping them reduce it, but their original level was so high anyway that it's just reducing it by little. And the women's group uh, who's not flossing, um, their risk of heart disease is going up, but because it started off so low, because they're not eating as many red meats as the men and other, other issues, um, the, the lack of flossing hurt the women and it helped the men. But because the two groups were so different in the beginning, um, you won't see the, the difference come out. So my point is there, if you really wanted to see the effects of the lack of flossing, you would have to randomly um, assign people to one of those two groups. Otherwise, the two groups might be too different, and so we don't really know what what is causing causing the difference there. Maybe flossing, maybe dietary habits, exercise, things like that. Okay, so that's that's some pretty tough stuff, but I, I think I've um, worded it in a very uh, similar way to the quiz questions there too. So hopefully that will help you uh, at least figure out those. And if you think about it a little bit, um, also process why if we have two self-selected groups, we might not see what we expect to see with the causation, whereas if we have two randomly assigned groups, we would see a difference um, based on the causation there. Okay, and if you have questions, as always, just feel free to email me.